Uh, welcome everybody. Today is December 2nd, 2014. This is the joint meeting between the City of Aspen Council and the Board of County Commissioners Picking County. And we got a, just a few agenda items on our uh, meeting agenda tonight, starting with Health and Human Services Trends Discussion, which will be an overview of what we what challenges and, and good opportunities we have moving forward. So, Mitzi, are you taking this away? I'm taking this away. Thank you. Um, I introduce your team or however you want to do it. We've got it all worked out. Hello, everyone. We practiced all day. <laughs> <laughs> We're set. So, hello, everybody. Um, yes, I'm Mitzi Lettingham, and I work with Picking County Health and Human Services. And our Health and Human Service Network, otherwise known as the POD, is really pleased to be here today to be able to present to you um, the trends that the agencies are currently experiencing and have a discussion of service provision as we know it in Aspen and Pitkin County. Um, so for a number of years, as you know, the POD has met with the City of Aspen and the Pitkin County Board of County Commissioners during budget season. Uh, generally to review grant requests and also to provide information on common issues and trends as well. Um, today's presentation will not be budget focused. We, this presentation is inspired by the organization of the lifelong Aspenite chapter in the 2012 Aspen Area Community Plan. And so with no further ado, I'd like to turn over for a formal introduction to Marty Ames from Senior Services. Because I'm such a master of formality, right? <laughs> um, hi, it's nice to be here again. Um, as you know, Senior Services enjoys a more defined funding relationship with the city through the Intergovernmental Agreement, and of course with the county as a department of the Health and Human Services section. But I'm here to introduce the presentation today um, because we're here as a group of human service providers who enjoy a long and rich history of working together to serve the residents and workers of Pitkin County and the city of Aspen. We recognize that our united effectiveness far exceeds our efforts individually. When a, a senior needs dental health services, I turn to Smiles for Seniors first, which is a, a program of the Aspen to Parachute Dental Health Alliance. If a senior needs a depression screening, I reach out to Mind Springs Health or Hope's, uh, the Hope Center. Um, the Community Health Services provides our senior flu clinics and, and uh, collaborates with Aspen Valley Hospital and Senior Services to do the annual senior health fair, uh, which this year set a record 300 and some people, uh, seniors in the Valley attending. Every agency here has similar stories of collaboration. Our historic city and county um, agreement to focus both on residents and on employees of the uh, city and county helps support the economic engine of the community. We're all connected beyond the boundaries of the city of Aspen and Pitkin County. Uh, the electrician in Rifle can't spend two hours on the road to come wire houses in Aspen without the security of knowing their child is safe in quality child care. In a few minutes, you'll see quotes from major employers emphasizing their awareness of and reliance on these agencies uh, for the support they provide to their employees. 20% of our county still works, still lives below the self-sufficiency standard. And these are the groups that are providing the safety net. Finally, I'd like to remind everyone that there are only, uh, that the only mandated human services are child and adult protection, veteran services, and public assistance. 
Even public health, while mandated, is optional in the scope and, and level of the services they are able to provide in a community. Our purpose today is, give, is to give you the information you need to understand the role of our services in the lives of those who live and work in our community and county. Um, as Mitzi said before, we've modeled our presentation uh, to follow the lifelong Aspenite chapter of the Aspen Area Community Plan uh, to make it as relevant to you as possible. So let's begin. I'd like to introduce Dana Peterson with Mountain Valley Developmental Services to start. Thank you, Marty. So the first area of the Aspen Area Community Plan that we're going to look at is self-reliance. And I'd like to first thank Candace Cross from Habitat for Humanity for collecting the quotes that we'll be um, using today. And Linda Forjax, the Director of Human Resources and Risk Management for the Roaring Fork Transportation Authority says, the cost of living here is so high. RAFTA regularly refers employees to local nonprofits that provide valuable services to shore up the needs of Valley workers and their families. The first area under self-reliance that we're going to talk about is to ensure that affordable, accessible, high-quality childcare is available for all families who need it. As you may know, Rocky Mountain Early Childhood Council and Kids First Early Childhood Network and many other childcare programs exist throughout the Valley that have this as a goal and are supportive in working to achieve this goal. The second area under self-reliance is to encourage businesses to adopt a family-friendly employment policies. While the nonprofit organizations do not have a ton of control in this area, we are directly affected by the community's dedication to employment-friendly policies. Um, government and big businesses lead the, area, lead the work in this area, and it's difficult for everyone in, in our valley given the high cost of health insurance, especially in Garfield County. Of note is that a lot of individuals put about a half of their income toward rent, and that leads a very large challenge for our employers to make sure that they are supporting their employees in every way possible. The third area under self-reliance is to promote self-sufficiency and self-reliance through coordinated, comprehensive, and sustainable programs. You'll note on the slide here that there are several different organizations represented. I'll, I'll pick out a few of the relevant quote, uh, quotes from your handout. In 2012, Health and Human Services had 148 public assistant cases. As of September 30th, 2014, there have been 1,100 Medicaid cases. This is driven, of course, by the Affordable Care Act. <coughs> However, it has demanded an increase in resources toward this area. Another note from Catholic Charities is that wage theft is a problem where employees um, are taken advantage of and employers um, take advantage of them and those who desperately, desperately need jobs and then often do not pay them timely, or if at all. Mountain Valley Developmental Services is working on self-reliance as well. Our early intervention program services are effectively reducing developmental delays or risk of delays in the school system and thereby drastically reducing the need for additional services after children turn three. Moving on, the next area under self-reliance is that is expanding the opportunity for safe and healthy housing for those in need, including older adults and people with disabilities. Habitat for Humanity of the Roaring Fork Valley has partnered with 17 local families in need to construct affordable homes, but has struggled to build houses up valley due to the lack of available land and high real estate costs that I'm sure you guys are very well aware of. The Aspen Homeless Shelter um, has noted that the Roaring Fork Valley com community is experiencing a notably large number of residents with extreme emotional distress. In some cases, these residents do resort to suicide. However, our goal is to, of course, support them so that they can be self-reliant. Catholic Charities also notes that they continue to receive three to five requests per day for rent assistance. And this is a growing trend as more and more people move to the area because, quote, it looks like a nice place to live. These people, of course, have no income, no jobs, and probably nowhere to live. 
The fifth area under self-reliance is to ensure that all community members have access to public assistance programs for which they qualify. The pod works really hard to collectively um, connect resources wherever possible. And there are many other collaborative groups throughout our valley that work hard to do the same. Now I would like to introduce Lori Mueller, who is going to speak about the second area of the Aspen Area Plan, public safety. Hi. Um, OK, so we're on public safety. And that section, under that section, the first one is to ensure a safe community. And essentially, you're talking about um, creating a space for, oh, let me read the quote, sorry, I missed it. Um, so the quote is from Alicia Miller, the HR director at Aspen Valley Hospital. She says, health and human service agencies in our community work together to create a healthy environment for all. At AVH, we rely on numerous other nonprofits to support our employees and the work we do. And in return, we support their efforts. Um, so public safety, the first section under that is to ensure a safe community. And that includes domestic violence um, services, so support groups and education around domestic violence, and also around child abuse, um, child sexual abuse. We have pro bono legal services that we provide for families and individuals. We do restorative justice for young people who've been involved in the criminal justice system. We offer the homeless um, services and resources and rent assistance for them. Um, we do lots of, uh, obviously, child protection services services and um, child advocates in the court system. So those are just a few of the different ways that we're ensuring that Aspen and Picking County remains a safe community. The second area under that is to ensure a safety net also exists for those families who live in Pitkin County, who work in Pitkin County, or tourists here, so that they also feel safe. Um, some of those safety nets, again, revolve around domestic violence um, and child sexual abuse. What has happened is that the We've increased our um, educational and parent classes that we do, not only for the community, but for um, the schools. So um, our trend is that we're trying to do a lot more preventative work around that area. Um, we also have seen, unfortunately, a rise in child uh, welfare cases excuse me, from 58 in 2008 to over 160 in 2013. So quite a rise with that. Um, the other, some of the other things that we have going on is that we offer emergency services for any victims of crime. And this last year, um, the mental health organizations um, did a whole mental health initiative. Some of you might have seen it, but just really bringing a lot of awareness around suicide. Um, Aspen has the second highest rate, twice as high as other counties actually picking county, than um, in Colorado, and three times the national average. So really um, a definite concern of ours. And so there's a whole mental health initiative going on um, specifically for suicide intervention and prevention. The last area is um, to reduce juvenile and adult crime. <clears throat> So we're, even tonight, um, as we speak, we're doing a um, big event over at the Aspen High School, um, bringing in experts in the field, especially to talk about marijuana, um, where Aspen fits in with all of that and um, have some conversation about, um, to parents and to community members about how best to respond to that. We also um, know that petty theft charges have gone down and assault charges for juveniles have gone down over the past couple of years by 50%. Um, that's a really good thing. Um, so far, marijuana charges have not, we have not seen an increase in that, even though, um, again, this valley is um, known for its marijuana use and we actually, our teens use at twice the rate as um, other communities. But we haven't seen the arrest rate go up. Uh, yet. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay Hulafaro again from the Buddy Program. Thanks. Um, I'm going to speak about the um, section within the um, 
lifelong Aspenite chapter that focuses on health and well-being. And again, uh, we have a quote. This one is from Debbie Braun with the Aspen Chamber Resort Association. She says, we strive to take care of our own in this valley because there is such a limited number of available workers. Health and human services nonprofits help to maintain a healthy workforce, which is critical for local employers to achieve their business objectives. The first um, heading under health and well-being um, has to do with um, promoting community-wide collaboration to address health and social service, service needs throughout the community. Uh, the list of coalitions and groups working together here is impressive, and it stresses the need the reality that our organizations work very closely in a multitude of ways on a multitude of topics to ensure quality programming for our clients as well as addressing new trends that arise. To highlight a few of these, you will see that in addition to POD, the group that's represented here today, there are groups that include first responders, groups who provide services for seniors, and groups providing services for youth and families. These groups meet consistently throughout the year, and many are steered through smaller, issue-driven groups to bring solutions to the broader coalition. The second and third headings under health and well-being refer to the healthcare system and access to primary care. The main trend to take away here is that there are a lack of doctors and dentists who take Medicaid or Medicare in Picking County. This creates barriers to those who have Medicaid or Medicare or who are uninsured um, to receive care without traveling long distances. While there are a lack of providers, Picking County has Health and Human Services reports a 155% increase in the number of individuals who signed up for Medicaid between 2013 and 2014. More individuals qualify for these government programs under the Affordable Care Act, but the pace of providers accepting these programs has not kept up. Mountain Family Health Center in Basalt is the nearest Medicaid provider for Picking County residents, and they saw a huge increase in individuals with Medicaid or Medicare seeking services within, the last, within a six-month time frame this past year. Finally, I want to note that Medicare providers will become increasingly in demand as the population of individuals in Picking County who are 80 and older will increase from 400 individuals today to over 1,400 individuals in 25 years. The fourth heading here states that residents of all ages and abilities have access to comprehensive mental health care <coughs> as well as substance abuse treatment. Many of our organizations are working with clients who have increasing mental health needs that are more complicated and more complex than ever. Our organizations are working together to address these tr trends to help clients navigate the system to receive mental health care and also looking at coordinated care amongst our agencies. Agencies are seeing an increase in crisis referrals for mental health, and they're working with veterans. They're also working hard to provide case management so that follow-up care can take place after the referral is made. The fifth heading um, here covers dental health, and as I have said before, um, the lack of dentists who accept Medicare or Medicaid and Aspen in Picking County creates gaps for our clients seeking dental care. Um, individuals with Medicaid or Medicare must travel to Rifle for affordable care. The last heading under health and well-being refers to healthy family functioning. You've heard already about a number of agencies working with families in this area. Our agencies continue to work with populations of single parents and families struggling to meet basic needs. Uh, there are new collaborative efforts. Um, one that I'd like to highlight uh, is the Family and Community Engagement Team, which is an opportunity for families with complex needs to come to one meeting with multiple agencies in order to create a plan and receive case management around making that plan happen. This is currently happening for families in Picking County as well as the Mid Valley. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Dana, who's going to do the last um, section on education and lifelong learning. Thanks, Lindsay. As Lindsay said, the last section is on education and lifelong learning. And there is only one um, quote I'm going to read, last quote. And it says that creating an environment in which all residents can thrive in good times and in bad is critical to the ability to attract and retain the employees who contribute so much to the social fabric of our vibrant valley. Key is employee access to health and human services.
This isn't just about Ski Co. It's about our community. And that quote was provided by Matt Hamilton, who is the Director of Sustainability with the Aspen Ski Company and also is a school board member for the Roaring Fork School District. There's only one um, part under the education and lifelong learning, and that is to ensure all residents have access to local educational opportunities. And of note is, is that there are numerous groups working hard to ensure that there are additional educational opportunities throughout our valley. Um, the Go to Work Colorado Mountain College Program, Valley Life for All, Mountain Valley Developmental Services, Senior Services, English in Action, the Denver University Graduate School of Social Work, Western Colorado Masters of Social Work Program, and many other organizations which offer classes or learning opportunities. The trend that we're seeing with um, our learning is that while we are doing more and more to ensure there are opportunities in our rural area, there's a lot more to be done in this area. And we hope that we can continue to work together to provide those educational opportunities for our, the people we serve and for each other. And I'll turn it back over to Lindsay for closing. Playing tennis. Um, yes, so that concludes the um, formal part of our presentation. We'd like to end with one last quote from the website Learning for Sustainability. It reads, resilient communities are capable of bouncing back from adverse situations. They can do this by actively influencing and preparing for economic, social, and environmental change. When times are bad, they can call upon the myriad of resources that make them a healthy community. A high level of social capital means that they have access to good information and communication networks in times of difficulty and can call upon a wide range of resources. We believe it is this amazing network of agencies providing quality programming for residents and workers within Picking County and the City of Aspen that makes our community stand out against other resort communities. At this time, we'd like to open it up to any questions or comments that you all have. And thank you. Any questions? Well, we're going to hear from our others. Was it just the... Just us. Okay. Are you, other agencies? Yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, I'm, I think it's wonderful everyone else is here. I wasn't yeah. sure if there was... Yep. Yeah. So um, all of the agencies that are here have put information into the packet that's in front of you. Um, but if you have specific questions for other agencies, I'm sure they'd be happy to. Okay, Rob. How about can we, we can introduce yeah, who's yeah, here. Let me introduce themselves. Yeah, why don't we uh, go around the room and do some introductions. Tell us uh, your name and, and what organization you're with. Can I start with. Sure, I can start. I'm Blythe Chapman. I'm with Riverbridge Regional Center, Child Advocacy Center serving Pickett, Garfield, Eagle, and Real Life. Party Ames, Pitkin County Senior Services. Let's see what we have. Maybe you could stand up. Oh, if, if, if <laughs> the acoustics aren't great in here. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Liz. Liz Starf, Director of Community Health Services at uh, Pitkin County Public <coughs> Sandy Swanson, Executive Director of Family Visitor Programs. We provide support and education to pregnant women and new babies from Aspen to Parachute. Amy Barr, United Way, and I cover the area of what we say from battlement to the bells. <laughs> <laughs> Marion McDonough with Catholic Charities, and we serve Eagle, Garfield, and Pickin County. Shirley Ritter, Director of Kids First. Diane Wilter, Director of Your Friends for Life, helping cancer families from Aspen to Rifle. Kelly Keith, I'm the Regional Oral Health Consultant with the Aspen and Parachute Dental Health Alliance. Sandy Eidelhard, I'm the board president of the Aspen Hope Center. Um, Marcia Goshorn, I'm on the Senior Services Council and on the Housing Board. Mike Connolly, I am the Executive Director of Valley Partnership for Drug Prevention. Kimberly Jen, Executive Director for Alpine Legal Services. Christina Gare, Executive Director for Aspen and Parachute Dental Health Alliance. <laughs> Me? <laughs> I know you guys. <laughs> I'm Gary Bender. I'm with Valley Life for All, and our organization provides opportunities for people with disabilities to participate and contribute to the community. I'm Candace Cross, Director of Capacity for Habitat for Humanity of the Roaring Fork Valley. I'm Jenny Lindsay, and I'm the Director of the Family Resource Center of the Roaring Fork School District. 
Hi, I'm Ross Brooks, CEO of Mountain Family Health Centers. We serve about 15,000 folks in Garfield, Pitkin, Eagle, and Rio Blanco counties. I provide medical, dental, behavioral health care services in partnership with many of the folks in the world. Gabrielle Gries, Executive Director for Wind Walkers, Equine Assisted Learning and Therapy Center, and we do service all three counties. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I'm Tony Passarello of Mind Springs Health. I'm the program director. Thank you, everybody. And I'd like to just say thank you for all the work and time you put into making our community a better place. So it's nice to have you all introduce yourself. Uh, George? Yeah, just a, a comment. I, I think um, what's not unique is some of the, the, all these issues and challenges that we have here in this community are similar in certainly other resort communities. I think what makes us unique as a community is recognizing the importance of addressing these issues and challenges and having the community support to do that. Uh, and the community supports all these organizations through their voted, mandated um, ways to fund, help fund these organizations, either through the Healthy Community Fund or through other mandated programs that the city of Aspen has. And so that is what's really unique about this community in terms of ad trying to address um, the issues and, and, and striving for a lifelong Aspenite. So whether you're dealing with nonprofits from prenatal to seniors or cradle to career or the homeless uh, to the affluent, Everyone gets touched in some way by one issue or another. And I think for us, the county, and for the city to continue to find ways to help support all of your organizations uh, to, for you to be able to move forward and, and, and to address these issues, I think is, is critical. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's a great thanks to all of our community members who support your efforts and our efforts to do this um, by allowing us uh, a funding mechanism. Um, yeah, I'll say, I'm going to say thank you personally as well for all the work you guys are, and gals are doing. Um, we've been through 08, 09, 10, 11 in the last couple of years, at least on paper, on the surface, have been much better for at least some, um, but I would say many. Um, I was just wondering kind of what you've seen over the past uh, 18 months or two years as far as needs from the existing, are your needs growing because there's more people coming to, to the area? Or even though some of the boats are floating a little bit higher, and theoretically that should come down to even more of the less fortunate who aren't making as much money, but there's, there's increases in jobs at all levels. And I'm not sure if that has made up for some of the, the needs that's come up before. Or kind of what's been going on the past 18 months in the, in the world, not to group everyone together. But I'm assuming there's some common threads that I think we would like to hear about a little bit. I can speak a little to that. I'm also the HR director at Mountain Valley Developmental Services, and we have um, really seen a lot of growth um, in our um, number of individuals served, but also, especially in the children's program, we've seen continuous growth through the, th since 08 um, in the number of children, zero to three, that we serve in that program, which leads to additional staff um, in the in in the last four years since I've been the HR director we've grown from 120 to 188 um, employees and that's a huge number of employees for a nonprofit organization um, and then as far as the cost of services I'm sure you recognize that we're in a very high cost area and for organizations like Mountain Valley who um, some of our services are um, paid for by Medicaid, and so we get reimbursed. Um, however, that doesn't always cover it. And so the cost of living here sort of leaves us with a gap between um, sort of the bare minimum and what I would consider thriving or um, living with dignity for the, especially the adults with disabilities who are in our nine group homes throughout the area. So um, that's my perspective. I mean, I can't speak for this giant population of people, but that's our perspective. I'm wondering if Marion from the Catholic Charities, because she has more of a handle on physical needs. Um, you have to speak into one of the mics when you're... 
more than just introducing yourself. After the Oscars yeah. and Super Bowl, we're the third most watched program in the country. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm really intimidated. Um, one of the things that we've seen over the last 18 months is, um, yes, the job market has gotten better, um, and with that has uh, brought some people into the area because of the demand um, of those jobs. So like, you know, as your construction grows, you need more workers, which, so you've got more people coming in. Um, so your housing market has really tightened up and the rents have really gone up and that's gotten, uh, made it more difficult for people. Um, and also some people that had, um, there was, they may have had some sort of savings or something to fall back on to help them get through um, the really tough times in 2011-12 uh, that you were talking about. And those resources ran out as um, were, uh, the job market hadn't really kicked in. And so they were put in, um, especially I guess we, we, we would see people come in that had never asked for help before and that's you know that's a population I'm talking about and um, we get probably half of the people that we see each year have have never been um, to us to ask for assistance before and that's always kind of remarkable um, we still do get the three to five calls a day asking for rent assistance so even though the market appears to be getting better it's um, just incredible that there's still that many people in need Um, Marty Ames again. I, I want to echo uh, from the, the uh, older adult perspective, the senior perspective, that we continue to see any one big event uh, being able to push uh, a number of, of seniors in our community, um, retired employees um, who are living on a fairly low income. Um, Put them over the edge so that they continue a dental emergency, a uh, even a, a car emergency. So those situations are still are still here, and um, and maybe as as Marion pointed out, those with a, a little a bit put away had had to go through some of that during the, the lean years, and not working. Most of our older adult residents don't have an opportunity to catch back up very easily. <laughs> Sandy Swanson Family Visitor Program. So I'll talk about the other end of the spectrum, which is pregnant women, newborn babies. Um, what we're seeing is huge impacts to a lot of our population for the off season. So they're they're doing okay. They're getting there, they've got jobs, they're doing fine, and then comes the off season and there's no money. So that's when we have to step in with Catholic Charities and other organizations and get families food. Um, and the other issue that we're looking at is in terms of housing. We make home visits. So we go into housing from Aspen to Parachute. And yeah, there, is, there are families that are middle class, upper middle class, well off, that can afford to care for their children. And then we have the families that are living in a bedroom. And we have a lot of those families that live in a bedroom in a house. And they share the cooking facilities with other families. And it's because the cost of housing keeps going up. And although they would love to have a house with enough room to bring up their children, right now that's where they're living. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to just say something about sure. the health yes. realm. Uh, Liz Stark, uh, Public Health Director. Um, in health, as you're all aware, with the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, it's really changed everything uh, for those of us who provide um, health care in any way. And I'm sure Ross Brooks from Mountain Family Health Center can uh, attest to this. Just more people are insured, which is great news. Uh, more people on Medicaid, which is great, and, and private insurance. But what that's done, what that does to our healthcare community is increase the demand for those services, which is 
a positive thing. We want the, everybody to be able to seek health seek health care, and more people are. Uh, but then you've got the impact on the agencies who are providing that health care. And as was mentioned in the presentation, uh, does our current uh, primary care system at the Ascend of the Valley have the capacity to serve those people who are privately insured as well as those with Medicare and Medicaid? And so Mount Family Health Center has has been taking on a lot of that for our community, and Community Health Services also takes Medicaid for preventive services. So uh, in the last year, we've seen a huge impact in serving people with insurance. And also, a lot of the work that Mitzi's gang does in uh, public assistance and health and human services, helping people navigate that system. You know, having insurance is uh, really it's a learned behavior. If you've never had it before, you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to use it. So a lot of work goes on in every one of these health organizations in just educating people about how, once you have it, now what do you do with it? So I think that's been a huge impact. Thank you. And that goes for employees as well. Um, I'm having to educate them on what that means. Perspective. Could you talk a little bit about um, your outreach? How do people find out about your services? Um, Which, everyone? Um, <laughs> whoever can. <laughs> 25 in here, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I figured some will <laughs> rise to the top here. <laughs> um, I can speak from the Buddy Program's perspective. We uh, partner really closely with the schools to get referrals. We also partner with um, the Health and Human Services through Pickens County to refer children to us who are in need or families seeking services. Um, we work really closely with a lot of the agencies up there who also work with youth and families, including Youth Zone and the Roaring Fork Family Resource Center, um, to get referrals. A lot of families know about us and will come seek us out. I was going to speak, oh, sorry, just really quickly from um, Youth Zone's perspective. A lot of kids, a lot of counselors in the school system know about most of us so that they can access. The Family Resource Center does a fabulous job at knowing what resources are out there. And the Family and Community Engagement Team that Lindsay spoke about earlier is a group. It's a collaborative group. So when a school counselor says, hey, this is a high needs family, um, they could use some support. They know to call FACET and get a referral in and that family will be seen. And um, all resources will be available to them at the time of the meeting and if they're not available at the table we'll get them connected so we're trying very hard to make this a kind of a um, no wrong door system to where a family might call Mountain Valley Developmental Services or public health or whatever, and we all know each other, so we can say, hey, this is really the, the phone number you need, or this is the person, and let me hand you over to them um, so that families aren't sitting and calling and calling and trying to find the open door. I also want to do <clears throat> hats off to Mitzi because she has really been promoting 211 among all of us nonprofits. 211 is a system that was started by United Way America. For example, in Colorado, there are, what is it, eight, eight regions in Colorado. Um, ours is run for Pitkin County Eagle, Garfield, and Mesa. It's run out of Mesa County. But other places, large United Ways run the hotlines. So we really want to encourage people to call 211. It is a free service to consumers. Um, uh, and Mitzi really has been the big, the big promoter in our entire region. The whole group of us has. And does that help? Does that answer your question? Well, I kind of knew how you did. But I don't know what to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anne. No, I. You know, in the presentation. So I. You know, I go to the. Pod meeting, so I know I've heard presentations from most of most of you. Um, what this pres presentation points out is the collaboration, which at each of those individual meetings that you, you don't really see, and I think that's really important for people, <clears throat> for um, everyone to understand that you are collaborating, you're working together, you're referring back and forth, and um, meeting the needs of the people in the valley in a much better way than if you were individual. Uh, working as individual agencies, and just shown by how many people showed up tonight. I mean, this is this is great. Clearly, there's thank you. Thank you. Cooperation. <laughs> Any questions? 
Fine. I'm going to throw the, go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Funding. Funding. Um, who could speak to what movement or gesture would be most beneficial in the short run? I'm not talking about a 15 to 20 year plan, but in the next couple of years, what would be the best thing that you could see your, you know, your broader government, both city and county, do or not do in order to amplify the effectiveness of our, our network and our support? Who can answer? Let's take that one. <laughs> can I, I will give you guys a break to yeah. pause and reflect. Barry or Don, where are we in? Um, yes. We have funding taken care of for 2015 based on some historical agreements. Um, the next, after that, it, it's open ended. It's a, I believe, it's a top 10 goal of at least this council yep. to spend some time amongst ourselves to kind of gather within the Aspen umbrella kind of where we are, what we're thinking about, making sure we spend some time then with the county or our partners for sure and administrators, uh, to Nan and Mitzi and, and Liz and everything over the past couple of years to help us facilitate distribution of the funds that have come from the city. But do we know when we're going to we're going to the city's going to start talking about that in the first quarter or second quarter? Or do we have an idea, Barry, what you're thinking or done? Yeah, it, the uh, this meeting was meant to begin uh, some of the process of understanding trends and the data that's out there so that council can begin to understand the nature of the problem. Then you've got some questions about how what role you want to play in dealing with that. So do you want to focus on a particular issue, <coughs> have a bigger impact by focusing money on that issue, whether that's uh, um, a population segment, a geographic segment, a problem segment. Once you begin to make some of those decisions and you understand how much money you're talking about needing, then we're going to have a conversation about funding, and most of that conversation is centered around some level of repurposing of the Wheeler RET in order to free up some of that money for these and maybe other initiatives that the council wants to take. So, again, first you understand the nature of the problem, you decide where you want to play, how much money that's going to require, and where it's going to come from, and that's going to play out <coughs> in the next six, eight months. So, again, there it is. That's the backstory as to why the question is being asked, which is coming at it from a couple of different ways. The point being, you know, you talk about kind of organic collaboration that's occurring in the community. And it, again, it's, it's to be applauded. It's very organic. It's grassroots. Um, and there are some formal mechanisms for funding here and there. George alluded to some of that earlier. But we're just trying to find out I, I think we have a pretty good understanding, just even in the, in the overview and the, and the reading materials and our general awareness of um, the need. I, th I think it would be constructive for us to describe or at least to, to start the conversation as to how we could more formally organize some of these funding structures. It at least guide some of the work that we're trying to organize at the council table here for the next... 6, 12, 18 months, as has been described. It is a top 10 goal of ours to try to, to build stronger, more explicit, more formal structures that, um, you know, provide support in this, in this part of the universe. Knowing we've already spent a boatload of money on the physical hardware of our, of our good community. If it, that's code speak for we build a lot of homes and structures or things around here, but we've got to start investing more in the software. So, will you repeat your question? <laughs> Just give us what if you have you had any ideas or even any any coffee talk conversations, and if not, that's fine. We could at least use this this medium yeah. for that to describe, or even you know, one of those in a conversation it might come up with like, man, if they only did this, that would be that would be really you know a, a needle mover, a, a market mover for us in our world. If they only did this. What is this? Well, I think um, I, 
I'll take a stab at this, Dwayne, and I, I'm coming more from a process perspective than sure. giving you a hard number. Of, no, I, and I don't want numbers. Yeah. I just I, I would process. appreciate process. That's perfect. Um, you know, I think the there was a time when Picking County and the city of Aspen worked really closely, and we submitted one grant to both the county and the city, and. Um, that process has changed a little bit over the years, and um, I, for one, found it really easy to submit one grant. Um, and I also would hope that, and I know that the county has um, a citizen review committee that reviews those grants and takes recommendations um, to the board for funding through the Healthy Community Fund. Um, and oftentimes, um, when I've been at these meetings, I've, I've been asked by the um, council members about you know, what are the trends or what are the things, and it, and we've written it in the grant. And so I think having a process um, through the city where the grants are reviewed, whatever that looks like for the city, um, whether it's having somebody from the council join Picking County's group or doing it on your own in a separate meeting based on your goals and objectives for funding, um, and then taking that recommendation to you all um, so that you can decide based on your goals for funding human services how that lines up. Um, that's my coffee talk with other people. Um, but if anyone else has any thoughts around that, um, I think that one thing I've been really hoping to come out of this process is um, an investment from the city, not just uh, here's a, load, uh, a sum of money given to the county, the county makes a recommendation, but the city to really understand what they're funding and why they're funding it and the needs that they're addressing. I don't I don't want to tell you what those needs should be. I think it should come from you all as to what you want to see addressed. Priorities, priorities, focus, mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. Got it. And if I can add. <clears throat> I think I've been a nonprofit agency director for over 25 years and dealt with a lot of these issues in the past. One of the things that's very important is match. 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 So when we're at, when we submit a grant to Temple Hoyn Buell, or I submit a grant to the state of Colorado for Tony Gramps' youth services, they want to know if the community supports us. Um, if, the commu if you can't show a community that's supportive of you, in whatever way, it might be $500 when the sheriff or the fire or the police chief in Newcastle decided not to buy jackets for his guys to support a nonprofit. Or it might be $15,000 or $20,000. It's really up to the individual governments. But match from government is really key. So I just wanted to put that in. I mean, we, Ray, we have a budget of over $1.5 million. I still write grants to the town of Snowmass Village for $1,000 because it's important that Snowmass Village matches. So a lot of my time is spent on what people would say are very small grants. Yeah. But that is very essential for us to continue getting money from big sources. So thank you. Libby, can I just jump in and just say, uh, Mitzi, you can uh, correct me because I'm probably a little off. But for example, this year, the Healthy Community Fund uh, gave out a little over a million dollars to over 75 nonprofits uh, throughout the valley and actually beyond the valley. And that really... Uh, uh, two million, George. 1.8 million. Well, almost two million. 1.8 million for about 75 so, nonprofits. Yeah. But in the past, that has only um, been equivalent to about 10% of perhaps each of those nonprofit organizations. So it's a very small amount. However, it allows those organizations to go out for matching funds. And that's what really helps, uh, even more so than the 10% that's really incremental. So the Healthy Community Fund is, is one great source of funding. Uh, and in the past, the city of Aspen has been another great source of funding to, again, incrementally help these organizations move forward. It's certainly not funding the organizations, but they're helping them. I, I would concur exactly with what you're saying. 
So yeah, I'm, that I'm, match is important. I'm glad Dwayne raised this issue. I'm wondering, Barry, with the mayor's support, if we could find, I don't know when we want to start the work session process, but I think, you know, it's a top 10 goal right. sometime in January with the mayor's support. It'd be great if we could try to find some time to kind of just have a casual dialogue amongst us, having a rough idea of where we are. We have some big questions, uh, you know, um, Lindsay and I have had a lot of conversations one-on-one -on -one in groups, and I think the city has a, had an efficient process about taking a set of money and handing it over to some really great people that are in the business of that. Um, not trying to do it because we don't want to get our hands dirty or anything else like that. Um, but I think we want to make an, there was an investment a year and a half ago when this came up in discussions from the election and how important this was and the funding and the involvement and I think that's how it kind of turned into this top 10 goal which I think will behoove everyone in this room and more importantly with all due respect all the people you guys and gals take care of. Yeah, and so I hope that we can find some time with everything else as soon as we can. <laughs> Good, thanks Adam. Yeah, great. Thanks. I have a question. You can stay till 1230. Yeah, <laughs> Ann wants to stay until 1230 again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did last night. We're going to do it again tonight. Steve. Let's go deep. Thanks. Thanks. I want to talk about trends. And I want to be certain that the elected officials are clear on what, what they are. Um, Liz, I'm leaving here really with just one clear trend. And it's something that Liz mentioned, and I want to know what the other two or three key trends are. Liz talked about a uh, additional stress on services as a result of more people being covered from Obamacare. That's a key trend, and that's that's very clear and easily understandable by us, so we can start to formulate an action plan to help support you. What are the other yeah. two points you want us to leave with? Money, this money issue, that, that deserves its own work session. So I wanna, that should be a discussion for the appropriate time. So Dana or Liz or Mitzi, Lindsay, perhaps could one of you summarize the three key trends you'd like us to, or, or 10 or one? I would say or, two of those would definitely be housing, a shortage of housing, affordable housing for all the workers, whether they are living in Rifle or Newcastle or Aspen, um, and, and so I think that is a trend that we are seeing. As a result of what? As, because it, the um, economy's heating up, more workers are coming. Because more workers are here, yeah. So I think there, there's an influx of people to work the jobs because there are more jobs, um, and therefore there, there is a shortage of housing that is affordable um, and okay. relatively close to work. I think that the time that people spend commuting is um, crazy around here. Um, I see people when I get up at five to, that are leaving the house, and I live in Newcastle, to drive to, and I know they're driving to Aspen. <coughs> um, so they're commuting three hours a day? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I can't, I, one would guess, yeah. Um, and that's Newcastle, and I know people drive from Rifle, which is 20 minutes farther. Can you add to that parachute? Really it's not just the time of the commute, it's the disruption to family life. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, involved exactly. In that. yeah. Are the kids in daycare mm -hmm. in Rifle or are they at daycare Aspen? Right. And are the children yeah, spending three hours dinner. a day in the car? <laughs> yeah. And are they supervised? And, um, and then, were you going to continue? Um, I would pull out mental health um, as a trend that I think all of our agencies are working with clients who have mental health needs and the increase in complexity of those needs and crisis nature of those needs. Um, what, what is the trend uh, in um, greater number, or great, the, the volume of this or volume, 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 and, volume and complexity, and complexity. I, with, and with the health care piece put into it. I think the insurance piece is, is complicated and, and finding Mountain Valley struggles to find um, appropriate providers because we have a, a disability on top of the mental health piece. So it's hard to find people who are trained in that specific area. And I, I think other people probably struggle with similar. And um, you could talk about, I mean, within that trend, b the need for bilingual mm -hmm. um, mental health providers, specifically Spanish-speaking mental health providers um, who are qualified. Um, and, I, and I think, too, as was mentioned, um, not just 
providing that service, but really following up with that person to make sure they get to that service and they do what they say, you know, the case management that goes along with that. I think all of our agencies are working harder to really um, not just take the referral and treat the issue, but follow up. What are the other needs? Oh, the, there's children in the home and this is what they need and um, really looking at the system, the family system. Two other things that I just thought of in regards to the increased population, if you will, um, is the need for child care that is affordable and um, accessible. So does the family have someone to watch their children between 3.45 or 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock when they get home from Aspen or w between 5 a.m. when they leave to go to work and, and 8 a.m. when the child goes to school? Um, I think that's a common thread I hear throughout the valley is people just don't have affordable, appropriate child care. Um, and then the other, on the opposite end of it is um, for elderly, I think there's a, there's a trend toward um, increased numbers of retirement age people in this valley as the baby boomers start to retire and then it's a great place to live. So I think there's going to be an influx of people continuing to move here um, and we don't have sufficient um, senior nursing homes or senior services. Senior services. I mean, not not to not to say that Marty's not doing a great job, but <laughs> throughout the valley, from from parachute to Aspen, there's just not a lot of. Okay. I was going to piggyback on what Lindsay's just said um, because what we're seeing is a co-occurring. So we have mental health issues plus you have substance abuse on top of that. So, and that has been an increase um, from youth zones perspective for juveniles. We know that um, in 2008, 2009, um, the number of kids that were referred to us that had substance abuse issues was about 10 to 12 percent. That number has jumped to about um, 25 to 30 percent of our kids. So they're not coming in with substance abuse charges <clears throat> excuse me but um, after we do an assessment with them substance abuse comes up as the, one of the number one things and then there's usually a mental health issue that um, is right along with that substance abuse so what what age when you say kids what age uh, we work with um, 10 to 18 year olds okay just a brief point uh, doesn't apply to all agencies, but a trend that we've certainly seen because of uh, Amendment 64 and the legalization of mm. recreational use of marijuana, we are seeing uh, kids with kids are getting mixed messages, especially younger ones. Uh, so we uh, at Valley Partnership, doing prevention work, uh, have certainly seen uh, had to redouble our efforts, and Great. we're doing things. Uh, you know, kind of at an earlier age and facing issues that we thought we maybe had a pretty good handle on and now we're kind of starting over. Okay. But thanks, Mike. Yeah, that's a good point. I just wanted to comment that, um, as I'm hearing everybody, all the points that we've made um, can be summed up by the priorities that were identified in our commu the community health assessment that public health performed a couple of years ago and identified three public health priorities to be working on in the next five years, and that was mental health and substance abuse, the needs of the aging population, and access to care. So I'd say that our public health improvement plan identified all three of the items that have been mentioned here today. Great. So, Barry, we have and these are just this is just the first grouping but we have um so six were listed more or less first there's an additional stress on general health care services due to changes in legislation obamacare and people taking advantage of um, these services which is a good thing but it comes with a cost secondly we're seeing a greater shortage greater demand for more affordable housing as a result of the heated economy because there's more jobs being generated, more people are coming. Third, there's an increase in the volume and complexity of mental health issues. Fourth, um, affordable and appropriate childcare. The need for it is an increasing trend. Um, increasing need for senior services and uh, finally, greater substance abuse issues in this 10 to 18 demographic, sadly enough. So 
our work, purpose of our work session tonight was to identify trends. These are, these are six significant trends, not the only ones, but perhaps the first six we can tackle. What do we do next? Well, again, we've suggested you need to have a conversation about what role you want to play. Do you want to have a broad approach so that your money is spread over a number of initiatives? you want to focus your effort? you want to do that with all of your money, with some of your money? Um, where do you want to, do you want to have a focus? If so, what is that? If not, you sort of continue to do what we've been doing and maybe it's just more. Um, is that a decision this body should make tonight or? Oh, I would no? suggest you not make it no. tonight. Okay. Just okay, I just want to start the conversation though. I just, because I just that, that we know and um, pod, the pod knows that there's uh, established and defined next step and appropriate action will be taken to address these issues. Yeah, I would probably add, you know, the Board of County Commissioners has made that commitment with the, you know, the pushing forward and the passing of the increased Healthy Community Fund in a program that's, you know, going to go for a few years. So we, we have that long or short long-term commitment, I should say. Okay. Um, you know, we'd, ho we'd hope that the City of Aspen would, would be up along with that to some level. Well, and that's a conversation that you have to have. Okay. As we all know, everyone in the City of Aspen delightfully, not everyone delightfully, but everyone does pay into the Health and Human Services Fund that is administered by you guys in the county. No, but it's a, it is an important point. You're right. You, you've made it a very explicit priority, and you guys have, have uh, kind of worked that into your priorities, and it's been ratified, and there's an opportunity to kind of build and, and uh, bolster that mm -hmm. through additional programs here at the city level. We're going to need, obviously, support, and I really appreciate Liz reinforcing you did you gave obviously another tremendous resource that we're going to want to stay connect obviously i want to make sure every time we have a conversation you need to be in the room without a doubt when we you know work through this obviously with the rest but this is exciting for me because this is this is really frankly when we ran the three of us ran you were pushing on this particular initiative and i really want to uh, commend that it's it's owned by everyone, but I'm glad we're finally putting some kind of some traction and some kind of, you know, mm -hmm. bricks and mortar around it. We're building a foundation, and I'd like to continue this, and, yeah. you know, we do need to commit to it. Yeah, good. Hell, I'm only up here for another six months, so let's get that done before <laughs> then. <right? laughs> and, Mr. Mayor, I don't need to remind you, but the city has a long-term funding commitment of $10 million for two of the trends that were listed. So right. it, Housing. Yeah, it's not like we haven't made significant commitments to dealing with these trend issues. Yeah. The committee has spoken rather rather well over the years. Absolutely right. We're just going to build on that. Yeah, Barry, thank you for that. Uh, that that's also important to remember. It isn't as if the city um, no. isn't doing anything. That millions and millions of dollars You're are committed to. No. I, I didn't mean to suggest that at all. I no, it's right. in your I budget. That. It's in your it's in That's your right. five year budget right now as a placeholder. That's right. Obviously that doesn't that you know changes year to year, but part of the reason why we're here listening to the pod is to hear the importance of how the the trends are not making things easier within our community. They're making things more challenging in our community. And that's the trend that I think that's the big takeaway today. The big takeaway is that things are getting more challenging here, not easier. And there are some things that we have absolutely no control over. People are going to move into that senior age bracket. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you can't stop aging. Um, you know, and there are some things that we do have controls over. And I would encourage all the all the all the programs in here, and you're all doing fabulous work to to look at how to make your programs more effective, to look at how to stop the problems earlier on in life so that the people's later on in life are more protected. And a lot of that was put into our um, healthy community plan and, and put into our Aspen Area Community Plan, you know, from cradle to career and beyond, you know, all of those things were based on making sure that we're challenging the, or meeting the needs at an earlier point so that we have less going on good mm -hmm. one more comment uh, Lindsay said it well um, the city needs to decide what what they want to invest in 
And so I view this meeting and Barry's comments, our future work <coughs> session, all as somewhat information gathering. You know, what, what are the trends, what, are tre what trends specifically affect Aspen, uh, what agencies uh, affect those, you know, uh, take on those, uh, those problems. And I'm actually very looking forward to the work session, putting all this information together and moving it, as, as Dwayne said, moving it from a somewhat emo emotionally based um, uh, program when it began to something that's really solidified and we know why we're investing and we can make some, some uh, strategic decisions about it. Great. So thank you all for Great. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. thank you for all your support. Great. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So do you. Dwayne has a way to Now we're going to. You said what I wanted to say. But, no, I'm sorry. Did I screw something? We up? talk about the Board of Health. Describe what we were moving towards. About your comment on the for six million dollars. Give us a billion dollars. It'll be 1.5 in the end. Everybody, we're going to we're going to continue on here. So if you yeah, take the conversations out into the hallway. Meeting. I think CJ's up is really short. Liz Stark and CJ Oliver for all of us. The, the rooftop is the question. It's 55 max at night, not 60. <laughs> but the difference is it's, not, it's, it's logarithmic. Go ahead, just say something in the mic. People just, will stop talking. Is that how this will work? That's the way I do it. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> so. Fair enough. So our group is here just for a you know a quick presentation and hopefully to answer some questions or address any concerns um, that either of the elected boards have about an IGA that's attached in your packet that would combine our local public health structures. So we're here tonight really as a follow-up um, to a joint work session about a year ago. Last fall, uh, both of the elected boards were presented with the idea uh, from city and county staff of combining our public health structures between the city of Aspen and Picking County uh, into a single public health group, um, a local board of health, a public health agency director, uh, et cetera. Uh, so our staff spent the last year really examining what that process would look like, um, identifying any potential pitfalls uh, that, that may come up as a result of combining those public health structures uh, and putting together an IGA that ideally would address any of those that we were able to identify through that process. Um, so that is included in the packet. Um, and just, I think, in summation, and again, if you have questions we're, we're certainly here to answer those as well but this IGA is designed to combine those public health structures number one um, into the Board of County Commissioners as well as a representative from the city of Aspen and a representative appointed from the town of Snowmass Village. Um, we're also looking to make sure that we protect the integrity of the parties that are currently involved in public and environmental health so uh, the IGA has specific language around the city of Aspen, as well as Pitkin County maintaining their existing environmental health departments, as well as community health services maintaining its integrity as a nonprofit agency that provides the lion's share of the public health services to our community. Um, not included in the IGA at all are any financial obligations for any of the parties involved. We feel like those decisions are best made by that board. Um, and if for whatever reason this doesn't work over time, there is a provision included to terminate this agreement rather abruptly if either or both parties are not satisfied with how things are going. Those are kind of the highlights uh, without getting into the legalese that's included. So what questions or concerns can we address? Questions? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, me too. Uh, control, loss of control, should we be concerned with that? There's, and that was one of the things that we really tried to be very specific about in that IGA is <clears throat> making sure that, you know, the, the parties involved, so you have an environmental health department from the city of Aspen, an environmental health department from Picking County, as well as that combined board of health. And there is um, very direct language that, that keeps those under the provision of, of their uh, current chain of command. So city of Aspen environmental health would receive direction from city manager <laughs> and city council. Picking County would 
receive uh, their direction from the county manager, county BOCC. Um, and I feel like as far as control of the public health issues, I feel like those are better addressed at the larger countywide group level with input from all representatives. Um, that board of health also would be advised by a medical officer, public health director, um, and Liz Stark and environmental health staff from city of Aspen and Picking County. So I don't see any loss of appropriate control of things that we're currently doing. Okay. Um, and no additional cost to us. There's county, not. The county's not going to come calling and saying we need an additional contribution of X because of Y. The county just, may. Just for dinner if we go past midnight. <laughs> <laughs> we specifically excluded any financial obligation in the IGA. And the, again, those decisions I feel are best made at that Board of Health level and not at this level. You know, George, people wanted to stay. Couldn't get them out of the room. Everybody has to go home now. They wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. <laughs> um, I, I have a question, and I think it's primarily for Liz. We had a, a very, um, what I would call, productive conversation with the uh, Community Health Board regarding um, setting some goals and some priorities in terms of how decision-making processes would go between the Board of Health which has been the BOCC and and community health, and you serve as, as both the public health director and the head of that board as well. So there's kind of that, uh, I don't want to say conflict, because it's not really a conflict. It's that dual role. Um, this IGA doesn't um, negate any of that good work that we'll probably take a next stab at at some point. Um, in terms of writing some of the IGAs to have the Board of Health and the Community Health Board work together in a more efficient, productive way so there's a chain of command if there are incidents in our community. And your question is... Well, that, my question that, is that question? this IGA really doesn't <laughs> affect that at all, and I'm hoping that we're still going to work move forward with that work because it, when we sat down, and it was the first time in the four years that I've served, when we sat down with the Board of Community Health, it was a very productive, you know, in my mind towards the end, aha moment that there are some logistical changes, not major, but logistical changes to make clear how things should be operating between those two boards. And I want to make sure that that work continues and moves forward because that's a very important partnership. I agree, and in fact, I think that we are, we're so looking forward to the new composition of the Board of Health to get the City of Aspen and the Town of Snowmass Village represented there to continue those discussions because um, we need, it'll just be great to have that representation there. And so yes, we do plan to continue those conversations uh, because the Board of Health for is responsible to really make decisions about public health priorities in our community and we need the city of Aspen the town of Snowmass Village there so the conversations that we're referring to were you know as my nonprofit board um, you know we're making daily operational decisions but uh, we need to be collaborating more between the Board of Health and my nonprofit board about the decisions that are good for the community and they need to include those other municipalities so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good. What's been the interface with Snowmass Village <laughs> heretofore? <laughs> so, um, the, you know, Snowmass Village has gone through some transitions uh, recently, and so I, I, I have uh, been in contact with my counterpart up there so that uh, they are aware that the IGA is coming and are expecting to have an invitation to appoint a board member if uh, both bodies here approve it. So up to this point, as it relates to policy or other matters within the oh, realm I'm of community sorry. health, none, none, no interface. Um, the city of Aspen chose to stand up, obviously, our own um, organization, for lack of a better term, we're pivoting away from that and, and consolidating back again. But at that time, uh, with the legislation being passed in roughly 09, Snowmass Village chose and opted not to do anything at their own level, but they also opted not to really to, to kind of actively engage. So you're right. So your conversations with town manager here over the next coming weeks will also inform the strength of the IGA as we go to the final. That, that's correct. Okay. 
CJ, will we um, hear from Morris Cohn or whoever the like we used to? Is it Kim Levin now? Kim. It's Kim Levin. Um, we, have, and we have yet to hear from Kim. Or yeah. Those updates will be will be provided to that Board of Health at uh, the quarterly Board of Health meetings. Um, and there's a couple of different avenues of communication that we could pursue. The appointed member uh, from City Council uh, could provide those updates at, at board updates or environmental health staff can also provide to City Council, you know, at their discretion. Uh, if you'd like us to provide additional updates related to seasonal flu trends or illness things, we can certainly do that at, at your request. Because we will be at those quarterly board health meetings and provide that information back to Council. Yeah, I mean, it really brings uh, the city of Aspen into the, the, the larger uh, discussion, the loop, and, and hopefully Snowmass Village, where you haven't had sort of the opportunity to hear sort of the broader discussion at our quarterly meetings where we get updates from Dr. Levin and, uh, and from Liz Stark. And so it's an opportunity to, to be better informed and, and be able to participate in terms of addressing uh, your specific needs for, for the citizens of Aspen. Okay. Good. Okay. I'll just say that I think the next step is for each entity to then go back and actually approve the, the IGA as it's currently written or not. Um, and we're hoping to actually make the change with adding the new members hopefully sometime in the first of 2015. And actually, just to add to that, um, pending the head nods, I think we're, we're getting at this table. We actually have first reading on our board's agenda for this tomorrow, and then a second reading on the 17th. I don't know, <laughs> Barry, when you guys have it. Um, I don't know. Have you put a package in for the December 8th meeting? We haven't. We will provide a resolution that would approve this IGA and appoint a council member as well as dissolve Aspen's current uh, public health structure for the 12th of January. Okay. <coughs> good. Yep. Good, good. And, and again, that, that's because the 8th is our last meeting of the year. So. Okay. okay. Midnight. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. It's going to be the 8th slash 9th. 8th slash 9th. Yeah. Thank you. It's Rob's meeting. Uh, any other questions? Thanks, CJ. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, CJ. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, any other uh, open discussion things of members? Okay. I will call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Happy holidays backwards and forwards. It's great. Thank you. Thank you.